Hey guys, it's um, Monday, June 29th, 2020. And um, I just pulled over and took my seatbelt off so that Mr. Mr. Brent wouldn't get on me for uh, driving and um, doing my videos with my seatbelt not worn properly. Sorry, Mr. Brent, I'll do better. Um, anyway, today I wanna go over something that may be a thing, it may not be a thing, but I'm, I'm gonna make it my thing, the way I call it, and it's called PTCD. Not PTSD, it's PTCD. It's post-traumatic COVID disorder. Um, every day, of course, it blows my mind to see what's going on, and I wake up every day anticipating what's gonna be in the news today. And I can only relate it back to the fact that most of this craziness has occurred since people have been cooped up for two or three months trying to um, overcome this virus, this pandemic, this overblown pandemic. And um, so post-traumatic COVID disorder is what I came up with. Um, obviously before this whole latest realm of racist relationships or lack thereof, um, there was the left and the media jumping all over Trump for being unfit to be president, saying he was a, a treated women bad and he was a sexist and and then he was a, a racist all along. Um, then he was uh, siding with the Russians for the conspiracy with Ukraine. And then of course he gets all the blame for the COVID pandemic, even though he reacted right out the gate in January at his State of the Union. And of course, now he's to blame for the race relations in our country and the fact that the virus has affected our economy um, for obvious reasons. And um, it's, it just blows my mind that um, they have gone to this extreme to make our nation this miserable and then turn around and blame it on a president who has, he has control, but he has very limited control over what people are actually going to do because um, you, you, there's freedom here. There's freedom to do what you want. If you've got a fourth of America being stupid and then another fourth of America who are going to agree with their side no matter what, and you got maybe 10 to 20% of the other 50% that are think they need to be on board with the other 50% because it's going to make us all better. We just got a lot of issues and a lot of people that are using their freedoms for the wrong reason, in my opinion. Um, when you start blowing up or tear, burning down buildings and tearing up property and threatening people on their property and beating up random people and tearing down things that aren't yours, um, you're, you're no longer using your freedoms properly. You're committing crimes at that point. You know, we went from the last month, George, when George Floyd died to this movement of trying to appease, um, appease different parties involved. I'm not going to specify the parties, but we've changed the name of SERPs. We've changed the name, or we've gotten rid of names of good old pancake SERP and rice. We've tore down statues. We're talking about changing the national anthem. John Wayne's in trouble now because he's a racist. College buildings are being renamed, possibly college. State flags are being changed today. St. Louis, the city of St. Louis is a racist, named after a racist person. So change the name, it's what they say. This one blows my mind, whitening products. Um, I don't know which companies, is probably Johnson & Johnson or L'Oreal or something, I don't know. Whitening products are now racist because they they're saying that lightning or slash whitening products to make people feel like lightning or whitening up is going to make you look better. So therefore you're creating an inferiority complex. I don't know. I'm just reading about it. It just blows my mind. Now they're mad at Target. They're going to burn down Targets now. They're mad at Beverly Hills because they're, they've got money. And they, they're, they're, they're mad at police, of course. Because if you say blue lives matter, you're part of the problem. 
And it's okay for BLM to ride all over the streets, write murals everywhere and anywhere and get approval to do it somehow. It's okay for them to set up chop zones and cities within city blocks. It's okay for them to yell and scream at police and tell them to be defunded because we don't need you. We want some other system in place. And to couple that, you know, I read more and more about these demands for reparations from what happened to the ancestors from 150 years ago when no one alive today was there and very few people can trace back to who was there. I mean, heck, a lot of a lot of people owned slaves back then. A lot of people, a lot of blacks owned slaves, a lot of whites owned slaves. A lot of them were indentured servants. A lot of them were, a lot of them were making money. I just don't know where you're going to draw this line with reparations, and I think it's stupid anyway. I think it's just another way they don't want a handout for something they don't really deserve, whoever they is. And I can go for white or black people. There's all kinds of people taking handouts that don't need them. You get off your butt and work. There's plenty of jobs out there. I want to end this by telling you two things. One, churches and conservative rallies can get together involving conservatives are being blasphemed for spreading this virus. But we've got a, we're in the middle of a June and a pride month. And we're in the middle of all these protests and not see, one single time I've ever seen them condemned for holding a pride event, a pride rally, a, a protest. But I guarantee you, if something happens to a bunch of people going down to Hilton Head or a bunch of people going to my church and a couple people get it, it's gonna be all over the news and we're gonna be a bunch of bad people. And I think that's dumb. Second thing, I want to close on, I talked to a fellow this morning. I'm not going to tell you his name because he works for the state. And the first time I ever met him, and we started talking with a, another fellow. And he um, was saying, he, he, he lived in Mexico half his life, about 20 years. Him and his wife came came up here to America, seeking op and, uh, had an opportunity. They, they were picking oranges for years. And he told me he worked his, worked his tail off picking oranges. And he said, Henry, he said, I had every opportunity to move to the next level, but I was scared. He said, one day I just finally did it. One day my wife finally did it. And you know what she is now, 20 years later? She's a realtor selling houses. You know what he's doing now? He's about to take over a division at a um, for a school district. Because he's working his way up. Because he worked his tail off. He did things the right way. He kept his wife and his kids in the picture, which is huge. And he takes care of them and they take care of each other and they've worked their way up because there was an opportunity for them. And he pounced on it. And he tells me everybody has this opportunity in America, but people are lazy. And I said, dude, you are dead on. People are lazy. I have 10 roofing crews. Every single one of them is Hispanic. You know why? They work their tail off. I don't have them. I don't own the business, but there's 10 of them, 10 crews working for us. There's a bunch of lazy people that, have, that were right here in America before these guys came here to work. And you know what? I don't mind if they take advantage of the opportunity and have a nicer truck than me because you know what? They're, they're working a lot harder than me. I'll drive my 2002 Ford, I don't care. But they're busting their can out there for me, for us, for our company, for their family. And that's what matters is these people are gonna sit around and depend on the government to feed them uh, stimulus money, whatever, food stamps. What can, I, what can I get next? Reparations, get off your butt and work. There's plenty of opportunity and I ain't scared to say it. I ain't going back to work for the state. And you can tag me all you want to. My boss don't care. But get up and get to work. You, you can make it. It's not too late. There's plenty of jobs out there. I guess that was my rant. Anyway, PTCD, post-traumatic COVID disorder. It's my word of the day. My acronym for the day. It may never take off. But anyway, have a good one, y'all. It's a Monday.